Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite topic, resins. Let's get started. Okay guys, we're going to talk about resins today. You know, resins come in all shapes and sizes. I've got these cans of resin from Harz Labs. I've got the glow in the dark or glue in the dark resin. I've got some from Anycubic. I've got some from, what is this place? What is this? Nova, Nova. I have some from Nova 3D. I have some from Elegu. And I also have some from, I have more Nova 3D. Why? So resins come in all shapes sizes, colors. Resins come in all shapes, size, colors, and thinness. Thinness? Viscosity. That's the word I'm looking for. Comes in all shapes, sizes, and viscosity. In fact, they're resins for DLP printers, which this good old Unicubic Photon is. SLA printers like your Moai or your Form Labs printer. All different types of resins that have different properties. Some are more firm than others. Some have flexible properties. Some are transparent. Some are opaque. There's lots and lots of choices. I wanted to go over how this guy over here actually prints stuff. Because I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, well, how in the heck does this work? I mean, it's just, it's all this technology. I want to show you a really kind of an elementary way of how this works. Okay, I'm gonna don my gloves just because. Even though I'm not gonna be dealing with any resin, I wanna throw some gloves on here, so. In case there's any stray resins on the vat, I don't get any on my hand, so. Okay, so. This little guy, like we discussed in the last video, is the build plate. You have a knob here that tightens the build plate to the Z-axis over here, build plate. Then you have what's normally called the vat. The vat has a thin layer of plastic along the bottom. Sounds kind of like a snare drum, doesn't it? This is commonly called the FEP. It's a thin layer of plastic. And it is meant to be, I don't know if you can see that in the light. You see how it bends a little bit? It is meant to be flexible, and there's a reason, and I'm gonna show you why. Let's all pretend that this is any cubic green resin. Well, this is not any cubic green resin because it wouldn't be doing this, I guess, unless it was printed and it had some flexible material, never mind. Anyway, let's pretend that this is any cubic green resin. Okay, the resin is now in the bottom of the vat, and it is on the FEP. So what happens? is the bill plate lowers into the vat and it squishes this resin. It squishes the resin until it's that thin, about the width of a human hair. And then the bill plate stops. After the bill plate stops, the UV light clicks on in here and it stays on for a particular amount of time, curing this layer of resin. Now hopefully, as the bill plate it rises, did you hear that? Let's start that again. Listen to this. You hear that thunk? That's exactly what happens. Check it out. The resin is stuck to the bill plate. Look inside the vat. There's nothing there. It should all stick to the bill plate. So what's gonna happen is this rises up and then it goes back down into the vat of resin and then it stops another 50 microns or 20 mi 25 microns, whatever you have it set at and the UV light comes on again, cures that layer and you guessed it, the build plate rises. Boink. And until you successively build up layers of resin until you have your beautiful print. And your beautiful print meaning this guy. I'm sure you've all seen this out on the Anycubic DLP owners group forum. This is the Anycubic torture test or lattice cube. This guy is ex 
extremely important. And it is very important that when you receive your any cubic photon, that the first thing you do is you level the build plate. We talked about that in the last video. Level the build plate, flatten the build plate, and then level the build plate. Take the USB drive that came with your AnyCubic Photon, put it in your PC, and copy those files that were on the USB drive over onto your computer. Then you'll want to take that little USB drive that came with your AnyCubic Photon and immediately throw it into the garbage can because it's garbage. The next thing you want to do is go to Walmart, Best Buy, Target, whatever your favorite retail store is, and get you a USB drive. Plug that USB drive into your computer, format it to FAT32, and then drag those files from your old USB drive from the Photon onto your new USB drive. Now you're set. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to print this. This is the AnyCubic Lattice Cube Torture Test. And the cool thing about this is it is already set up on the USB drive. All you got to do is plug your USB drive into your AnyCubic Photon, fill your vat with resin, make sure everything's tied. This is after you level everything. Press the print button, whoop, go, and it will print this. No supports with the little foot down on the bottom and you'll get this neat little lattice cube. It is important that you print this this should be the first thing you print. And the reason why is because the resin that comes with your AnyCubic Photon, you should get a 250 mil size of AnyCubic Green. That's what they usually ship with, is the AnyCubic Green. You wanna make sure and shake it up really good. You want to pour it into the vat. And I don't know if you can see it right here, but there is a, there is a line Actually, there's a little, there's a lip in the bottom here. There's like a little raised edge. That's not the, that's not the line I'm talking about, but just above the raised edge, there is a thin, thin line. I wish they would have made it a little bit easier to see, but right above the, this little raised edge, there is a line. And that's the spot where, that's the, the no-go zone. If you put more resin in there, you're asking for trouble because what is going to happen is either number one, you're gonna to have too much resin in here and just by simple displacement of a larger object into a vat of liquid, resin's gonna spill over the sides and you are going to have, a, you're gonna be in a world of hurt because all that resin is gonna pour down on your LCD panel and you ain't gonna be happy because you're gonna to have to take the thing apart and you don't wanna do that. The next thing is this, resin can get up in these screws here if you have too much resin in the vat it will bloop, it will go over and it will get into these screws so you don't want to do that so again this is the first thing you want to print do not attempt to print anything else but this because if you are successful printing this this tells you a multitude of things Number one, it tells you that your photon is printing properly. Because if you've leveled your build plate, if you've flattened your build plate and you've leveled your build plate and this thing prints great, you're 99% ready to go with your next print because you know that the UV lamp works, the bed is flat, the bed is level, the resin is that you have is calibrated for this print, so you are good to go. These resins can be kind of finicky at times, and they don't use the same recipe, I guess you'd say, as you would your AnyCubic Green, your AnyCubic Green that came with your printer. It's, it's not going to work. But the fine folks over at the AnyCubic DLP Owners Group, can you imagine I said that without screwing it up? The fine folks over at the AnyCubic DLP Owners Group have put together a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is super awesome because folks like you and me who are members of the group went out and we tested our own recipe of all kinds of resins so this spreadsheet has a long list of resins times as far as base layers 
as far as how many base layers, as far as off times, normal times, they've done all the work for you. Now again, this is just a suggestion. Um, I'm gonna place a link to the spreadsheet uh, in the links below. And this is, again, this is just a guide, okay? So this is just a guide that you're going to use and it's, it, it's helpful because when you, what you would do is you would look up, let's say, any cubic gray and a particular person has printed with any cubic gray and they had good luck with a particular, with particular settings. And you're gonna look on that spreadsheet and you can use that as a baseline. That's a good place to start. Because again, there's probably lots, of, and because again, there's lots of factors that are in play. The temperature of the room, the temperature of the resin, the, how old the resin is. So there's lots of different factors at play, but the spreadsheet gives you a good baseline on where to start. Just like any recipe needs a little extra salt, a little extra time in the oven, maybe because you're at a different elevation, so it takes a little bit longer in the oven. It works the same way with resin. So, but again, that works as a great baseline and you can start with those settings and hey, if it doesn't work, you can tweak them either up or down. So one of these days you are going to have your own spreadsheet and that's what I would suggest that you do is because when you have success with something, write those numbers down. Because if you're like me, I forget stuff. I forget what I ate yesterday. I forget what I ate for lunch today. So you gotta write this stuff down. If you're successful with a particular color and style of resin, write it down. That way, when you go to it next time, you have your own spreadsheet. So anyway, guys, I wanna thank you for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. Again, next time we're gonna be talking about how to change the, the FEP on your Unicubic Photon Vat. So have a great day, guys, and we'll see you next time. And we'll see you again next time on 3D Print Farm. Bye now. Gosh, I need a haircut. Bloop. Hey. Hey, hey, with the monkeys, maybe preserve more few rounds. Ah, uh, squishiness, no, it's not squishiness, um...